open and it's starting to get a little bit harder. I'm questioning what I'm doing. The time is getting tighter and my legs are getting tireder. But it is a race to see who is going to be the last man standing. Yes, that is the big question. In fact, it's the premise of this whole event. We have entered the Mad Hatter's Hourglass. And to explain a bit more about the concept, I'll hand over to John, the brainchild of this interesting idea. So a friend I used to work with, um, she mentioned it about a last man standing event she'd done. And uh, we looked it up and there's a, there's a few of them, but they, um, they tend to have no time limit. So we looked at it and thought, we don't want to be here for days. Some of them go on for days. So we, we looked at it and wanted to put a time limit in. So we came down with the idea of reducing time limit by a minute a lap. The course is, is 90% um, tarmac. Uh, the original course was all tarmac, pretty much. Uh, but because of the COVID center, we've had to change that this year. Um, so it's 90% tarmac. There's a bit of trail. Um, reasonably flat, I think there's about 50 meters of elevation. It's going to feel a lot more than that because that's 50 meters of elevation per lap. Um, I would expect most people to get a marathon distance. Um, and, and, and most people, I think, actually to get up towards an ultra marathon distance race. Uh, but yeah, it's, it'll be interesting because people can run seven, eight minute miles quite easily, a lot of the guys here. But can you run seven, eight minute miles when you've done 38? You know, and obviously the conditions today are going to play a part as well. There's a headwind for about 500 meters, and then you've got a nice tailwind behind you for most of it. Um, so that, that'll be, a, it'll be good to see. Well, as you can tell, this is going to be an endurance event. It starts uncomfortably slowly with 30 minutes allowed for the first two mile lap. Each lap, we then lose a minute. So lap two is 29 minutes, lap three, 28 minutes and so on. So the pace will need to increase as the recovery time decreases. Well, let the race begin. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so we are off. I've, I've got a pacer. <laughs> got a few pacers. Um, yeah, this is the slowest start to any race ever. And I'm quite enjoying this. Definitely walking all the hills right into the wind now. You're not going to hear me. and the, the tension's growing, like people are starting to get a bit nervous and the pace is definitely getting faster even though we still don't need to because we've still got, I think I'm coming in with about five minutes of rest, so that's plenty. But you kind of go like, oh, I don't want to run any slower because what if I like end up having to sprint to the next line and go again? And, and it's now, if I've got to make clothing changes and stuff like that, I've got to do it soon. So soon the race is going to start, but it still hasn't, if that makes sense. But my legs feel a little bit, just a bit sluggish and I'm excited to run fast, but I might not be able to when I need to. It's weird. Two, 
Uh, I've kind of lost count, but my watch tells me we've done 28k, almost 29, so it's quite a long way. And two hours 45 of running, but I still don't feel like I'm really started running. That last bit is so horrendous. You can see this wind. Um, yeah, it's just, I keep going in my head, like, because now everyone's spreading out a bit, so I've got a bit more time on my own, and I'm just like, oh, it's hard. I know, it's not really hard, I'm just jogging, but it's hard. But then I know I've got to run a lot quicker later on, and I'm nervous, so I'm still nervous about what's to come, even though I'm in it. It's just really, it's just mind-blowing. It's kind of just such a weird concept that I'm, yeah, I haven't really got my head around, but I'm just, I'm just running when I get told to start each time. Or rest, like, I felt really revived because I got changed, I've got new shoes on, new shorts, and I'm trying to sort of eat and drink a little bit, but I don't really need it. But I know later on I'm not going to have time to eat or drink, so I've got to do that now. And I sort of sit down, but I want to keep moving, and I'm a bit achy. Yeah, it's just weird. I kind of want that. I want it to be a few laps on when it's, like, hard, and then I'm racing, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm just going to sit down, I think. <laughs> Like I've got a stitch on that one, my tummy's funny, I'm like, the race is ramping up and everyone's kind of like looking at each other and kind of going, oh, should we go a bit faster here? And it's, it's definitely like elbows are cutting out. It's feeling more like a race now. So that's 24 miles total distance. Uh, we've had 12 people drop out. Uh, the next lap, they've got 19 minutes to finish the two miles. Uh, it's starting to get really tough out there. Um, they've got less time to change around between laps, so um, people are starting to find it tough. So uh, next lap is the marathon lap, and then after that we're into ultra distance. take the coat off it's serious now I've lost lost my windshield don't know where Ben's gone um, there's not very much time to chat now it's just running I reckon a couple more laps and then it's home time I'm not sure it's I mean in some ways I feel more like comfortable now I'm actually running and I'm like in a race again whoa gotta go So guys, we've got our third place female, Anna Smith. And we've got two ladies back out there. We've got Heather Bell and Pip Bridges. So they're on 32 miles if they finish this lap. So we'll wait to see who's there. If they don't finish this lap, it's first one over the line wins.
else. That was silly. I don't know why I did it. As soon as I crossed that sign, I was like, I can't turn around because I just have too much pride. I could not just walk back here. So I had to run another two miles and my quads did not thank me. I was in no man's land for all of that. And every single other headwind, I found someone bigger than me and I'd be like this and there was no one. And I was just like, how much slower can I get? And I basically got the slow clap at the end for still going, but um, it was lonely out there those last two miles. Lots of time to think about why did I do it? And I decided that because I'm a fighter and I can't, I can't give up and I partly wished I'd missed that start, then I would have gone okay. But as I got there, I had to go, I had no choice. You guys told me, these guys told me. I guess I won't regret it. I might tomorrow when I can't walk, but. <sighs> well, I always knew it was going to be a tough event, mentally as much as physically, but that closed lap format made it great fun and even quite social in the end. So I completed 16 laps, which equated to 32 miles or 52 kilometers of running. And Pip was the only other woman to complete that distance, but she was just too quick on the final lap and as a result took the deserved top spot on the podium. So that left myself in second and Hannah, who had kept me company for much of it, completing 15 laps to finish third.